Hello, District 58. Throughout the past 11 months, our district has consistently sought feedback from all of its stakeholders around teaching, learning, and our instructional models. While we haven't typically used a video introduction to those surveys, this time we wanted to try this method to provide some additional context around the questions we are asking for you to answer. The input that you give us is extremely valuable and consistently helps us to make the best decisions we can around teaching and learning in District 58. For example, based upon the feedback we received last November, we have set a goal of increasing instructional time for students in grades 1 through 8 in our district before the end of this year. However, within that same set of feedback, we also heard clearly that any change does have a measurable impact on all of our stakeholders, staff, students, and families, and we need to take that impact into consideration when evaluating any potential changes to the instructional model. To be clear, when we are talking about increasing instructional time, we are referring to all students, those who have elected fully remote and those who have elected hybrid. So when we talk about increasing on-site instructional time for our hybrid students, we are similarly talking about increasing synchronous or live instructional time for our fully remote students via Zoom. As the live or synchronous time increases for each student in grades 1 through 6, the asynchronous or independent time decreases accordingly. So for example, if we increase synchronous instruction by 30 minutes, then that's 30 minutes less of asynchronous or independent work that needs to be provided or assigned to the student. As we consider the options for our instructional model going forward, there are a number of possibilities, and each of those possibilities comes with impact. For example, we know that when we increase on-site or synchronous live instructional time at all, it's going to change the start or end time or both, potentially, of the student's instructional period. That's one of the impacts we consider as we answer survey questions about change. We know that any change in that live instructional time will mean that there is a difference in the start time or end time or both to the student's instructional day. We remain committed to following the safety and health guidelines set forth by the Illinois Department of Public Health. This also has an impact on our decision making going forward. Based on the most current guidance, we will be maintaining six-foot distancing for students and staff in instructional spaces. This means, for example, that we cannot bring back all of our hybrid middle school students five days a week, every day. Our buildings and classroom spaces simply don't have the capacity to allow for all of those students and six feet of distance. So increasing instructional time for our middle school students likely means lengthening the day, which would then necessitate a midday lunch break. This would not be a midday lunch break of hundreds of students in the cafeteria because, again, it couldn't be accommodated with six-foot distancing. It would be smaller groups of students eating in smaller spaces, but always six feet apart. As another example, if we were going to increase live instructional time for our students in grades one through six by a smaller increment of, say, 30 minutes, we may well be able to maintain the current AM and PM sections. However, if we were to capture more live instructional time, we would run out of hours in the day to have those two separate sections running and would need to instead welcome all of our hybrid students back on site at the same time. To accomplish this, we would need to set up classrooms and instructional spaces that could accommodate those students while incorporating six-foot distancing. For example, a teacher today may have an AM section of 10 students and a PM section of 11 students. Typical classrooms in District 58 can't accommodate 21 students at six feet of distancing, so we would need to make some adjustments. It may be possible that that teacher could take a group of 21 and teach in a non-traditional space, like the library, or a multi-purpose room, or in some cases, even part of a gymnasium. In other instances, we may look at those, some of the students in that teacher's classroom moving to another teacher at the same grade level within the same building. In many cases, there would be opportunities for those grade level teachers to work together and for students to continue to maintain some connection with their previous teacher, even as they work with a new teacher in the same grade level. However, when we look at all of the different configurations across 11 buildings of hybrid and remote sections, it is a reality that there will be some scenarios in which that continuity of teacher would not be possible for all students. These are just examples of the restrictions we continue to face while teaching and learning during a pandemic. And I'm sharing them not to create more uncertainty or to cause any anxiety, but to be fully transparent and open about what the impact of any potential change may be. 
If we ask ourselves the question, can we in increase instructional time for our students? The answer is yes, we absolutely can. And there is absolutely tremendous value in increasing that live instructional time for our students. However, there are impacts to any decision we make, and we want to be clear about what those impacts may be so that we can weigh the value of gained time against the potential impact as we move forward with our decision making. So we are asking you to answer a few questions that will help us to understand our community's perspective and priorities for instruction for the remainder of this year. While the survey is designed to be clear and straightforward, we know that it may generate more questions. I encourage you to reach out directly if you have those questions. You can reach me via email or by phone. I will be checking both over the weekend as we know that we are asking the survey to be completed by Tuesday, February 16th, so that we might have time to process and review all of the information prior to making a recommendation to the Board of Education on February 22nd. The one type of question I unfortunately won't be able to answer at this time would be the granular details, such as, what time would my fourth grader be dismissed if we were to make a change? Those are the details we are working on and want to share very soon, but the feedback we'll receive from you help us prioritize which model we might ultimately recommend, and then we'd be able to share those details again as part of a future recommendation. We ask that you fill out each survey that is appropriate to your family one time. For example, if you have a second grader, a fifth grader, and a seventh grader in your household, you would fill out the survey for students in grades one through six one time, and you would fill out the survey for students in middle school one time. Your partnership, your feedback, your input are not only appreciated, they are a critical part of why we are a successful school district. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this video and to fill out the survey. We look forward to sharing the information we receive from you with the Board of Education and the community at our instructional workshop on Monday, February 22nd at 7 o'clock p.m. And again, please don't hesitate to reach out directly if you have any additional questions.